Good morning, year three. I hope you're all good at home. Nearly there again. It is Thursday. We're going to need our plans with us today because we're continuing with our letter writing, writing the next paragraph. So let's go. OK, so starter activity today, we're going to think about the possessive apostrophe. And we have learned about the possessive apostrophe in year three before. And we know that we can use a possessive apostrophe to show that something belongs to or is connected to something. So it shows possession. So it shows when something belongs to somebody or something, okay? So in all of my sentences here, the possessive apostrophe is missing. So we need to think about where it goes in the sentence. So number one, Kim's mum bought some sausages from the shop. So we've got the person Kim, this is the noun here, Kim's mum. Okay, and we know that the mum belongs to Kim. Okay, she is her mum. So I need to think about putting my possessive apostrophe in the word Kim. So I know that the possessive apostrophe has to go before the S when it's a singular. So I'm going to write that out. Kim's mum bought some sausages from the shop. So I've written it out again correctly with the possessive apostrophe there. Let's see if you can do two, three and four by yourselves in your book. Okay, so let's go through the answers together then. So the butterfly's wings flapped as it flew from flower to flower. So we've got a noun here, the butterflies wings flat as it flew from flower to flower so we know there's one butterfly in this sentence okay it's got two wings and they belong to one butterfly so we need to put the possessive apostrophe before the s the butterfly's wings flat as it flew from flower to flower Okay, again here, the dog's tail wagged excitedly as he walked. So we've got the noun dog, okay, and we've got the tail which belongs to the dog. So we need to put the possessive apostrophe in the word dogs. The dog's tail wagged excitedly. And again, because there's only one dog, it's singular, so we need to put it before the S. And the last one, the dancer's costume they got the dancers, that's the noun. The dancer's costume was very colourful and bright. So we've got the costume that's belonging to the dancer. So it's one dancer. So it needs, the possessive apostrophe needs to come before the S. Okay, well done for having a try with that. Let's go on to our activity. So let's have a look at our learning objective today. And it's continuing on from yesterday to write a persuasive letter. And we are writing a persuasive letter to Mr. Lumber this week, aren't we? So let's have a look at the second part of our text map from Greta. And that's going to help us with our sentence writing today. As a child, I was taught to save electricity, not to waste water and not to throw away food. My biggest change is that I have reduced my carbon footprint as I have stopped flying in aeroplanes because of the impact it has on the environment. Great job, everybody. Well done for joining in with the text map there. OK, so yesterday I wrote the first part of my letter to Mr Lumber and I hope lots of you corrected my mistake on my video. Uh, because I accidentally put the date in the wrong place. So make sure that your date for your letter, we started writing it yesterday, that's why I've kept Wednesday the 3rd of March there, but it needs to go on the right hand side. So it needs to actually come below my address, so below your address in your letter. So let's look at our letter from yesterday, just to remind ourselves where we've got up to. So I've got my address, I've got who it's going to, Mr Lumber at Kingsley Primary, I've got my date on the right hand side now. And I've got dear Mr Lumber, with a comma, I am writing to ask for your help because I am so outraged at what is happening to our wonderful world. Astonishing animals are dying, the planet is becoming dangerously warm and sea levels are rising at an, at an alarming rate. 
So there, I've set the scene, haven't I? I've tried to hook Mr. Lumber in so that he'll continue to read my letter. So I noticed in my plan yesterday that I needed to tell Mr. Lumber what we've been learning about at school. We needed to include something about polar bears. I needed to try and include a list sentence, some emotive language and alliteration. And in my plan yesterday, I was able to tick off all of the success criteria because I'd started to think about some of these things. Although I'd written in full sentences, they're not really in any co uh, coherent order at the moment. And they wouldn't make sense if I just lifted those sentences straight into a paragraph. So I need to think about including some of these ideas, but making it into a more coherent piece of writing. And I'm going to model my example for you in a moment. And then you're going to use your plans to help you write yours. Okay, so I've just made the first part of Mr. Lumber's letter a lot smaller because I just wanted to put it there so you can see it. So again, I'm thinking about mainly telling Mr. Lumber about the polar bear. So I'm going to give him lots of information about what's happening to the polar bears because of climate change. And so I've put a little fact sheet on the year three page for you to use so that you can, when you're telling Mr. Lumber, you can use some of those facts in your writing to help you. So my plan yesterday, I wanted to include that I've been learning about polar bears and their habitat. They've lost their habitat, their food source. They often do not survive. I'm going to try and use all of those things that I used yesterday, that emotive language. I'm going to try and use those ideas in my paragraph today. OK, so I'm going to start my second paragraph, just like Greta did. She says, as a child, but I'm going to lift my sentence from uh, my plan at school. Comma, I have been taught all about climate change and the devastating impact. So again, I'm trying to use that emotive language, devastating impact. Global warming is having on polar bears. At school, I have been taught all about climate change and the devastating impact global warming is having on polar bears. Full stop. Then I want to try and use some alliteration now. So again, I'm thinking about that success criteria. So instead of starting with polar bears again, I'm going to say poor polar bears. So I'm trying to use that emotive language as well. Oh, excuse me, I spelled polar wrong. Poor polar bears are losing their habitats. So again, I'm lifting that sentence from before. I'm trying to use my list sentence here. Poor polar bears are losing their habitats, comma, their food source. And they often do not survive because, I'm trying to use a conjunction here as well, because they are so weak from hunger. So I'm going to read it back. At school, I have been taught all about climate change and the devastating impact global warming is having on polar bears. Poor polar bears are losing their habitats, their food source, and they often do not survive because they are so weak from hunger. So I'm going to go back to my plan, check that I've used my ideas from my plan. Okay, okay, so I now need to say something about the decline in numbers of polar bears and how it's troubling me. So I'm going to use that. Can you see I've used some alliteration there about po poor polar bears? I've used some emotive language. Okay, so I'm ticking off a lot of my success criteria here. Okay, so now about the decline in numbers of polar bears. I am truly, I liked that sentence from before, troubled by the devastating decline. So again, I'm trying to use as much alliteration as possible to make it much more powerful, much more um, so that Mr. Lumber really pays attention to what I'm saying. I'm truly troubled by the devastating decline in numbers of polar bears living on Earth. And 
I am also going to try and use a fronted adverbial because we learned about those before, didn't we? So as an extra challenge today, I'm going to see if some of you can use a fronted adverbial to start one of your sentences. So remember, a fronted adverbial is just really like a sentence opener. So I'm going to say frighteningly, comma, must have a comma after it, polar bears may become extinct within the next 80 years. I'm going to say to Mr Lumber as my final sentence in my second paragraph, we cannot let this happen. I'm going to use an exclamation mark there to say we can't let this happen. That's really shocking, isn't it? So let's read back my second paragraph, checking that I've included all of my all of my success criteria. So I've got at school, I have been taught all about climate change and the devastating impact global warming is having on polar bears. Poor polar bears are losing their habitats, their food source, and they often do not survive because they are so weak from hunger. So I have used my list sentence there, haven't I? I've got my three ideas together with my comma and my and. I am truly troubled by the devastating decline in numbers of polar bears living on Earth. Frighteningly, so this is my extra challenge today, I've tried to use a fronted adverbial. Frighteningly, polar bears may become extinct within the next 80 years. And then I've left it for my second paragraph with a bit of a shocking exclamation mark. We cannot let this happen. Okay, so over to you today. So I want you to use your plan to look at the next sections. We've done the opening. We're now looking at the middle part one. I want for entry level for you to write just a simple sentence to describe what is happening to polar bears. OK, and what's happening to their habitat. So you can just write a very simple sentence, maybe use the polar bear fact sheet that I've put on the web page to help you as well. So you can use some of the ideas, some of the sentences from there if you need some extra help. Some of you might be able to go on to challenge one, though, and I want you to write a detailed paragraph. So just like I've done a detailed paragraph about the melting polar ice caps and climate change. So using, again, the fact sheet to help you pick out some of the information about the polar bears. You might already have picked out your own information from the videos that we've watched before about polar bears. So you might not need the fact sheet to support you in that. But it's up to you whether you use it or not. Then in challenge two, some of you could go on to write a detailed paragraph about the polar ice caps and climate change and how it affects polar bears, so just like I've done. But the extra challenge today in challenge two is to use a fronted adverbial to create a really interesting sentence within your writing. So I want us to maybe start with interestingly, you could tell us a fact about polar bears, frighteningly, like I use frighteningly to say about the fact that they might become extinct within the next 80 years, shockingly. OK, so trying to use one of these or you could think of your own fronted adverbial to use to start a sentence. When you are writing it, don't forget to write it directly underneath the work that you did yesterday so it can follow on um, from your writing that you did yesterday. Make sure you've corrected where the date goes in case you haven't already, but have a really super day. Can't wait to see what you come up with.